What's up, Ecosystem? Welcome back to ATI Auto Business Tuesday Nights Live. My name is Jay. Auto logistics video news connecting retail, wholesale logistics, and tech. Your auto transport community media since 2017. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us again on a Tuesday night. Please do leave a like, click share, copy, grab that YouTube link. Uh, we're going to jump right in. Please do feel welcome. ATI is for dealers, carriers, brokers, dispatchers, auctions, everybody uh, in automotive. Uh, specific, specifically, we're focused on transportation and logistics here. And what I want to tell you is this is show 314 in a row. Is that right? 314 in a row. And we're doing Does Media Fuel Growth? Now, um, I'm going to move into the news, but... So the idea here is podcasts, websites, blogs, interviews, you see it, you watch it, you like it, you share it. Uh, do you absorb it? Is it, is it, a, it are you getting something out of it that's going to contribute to business? Are you getting ideas to produce your own stuff? Do you collaborate with others? And then once you go through all that, is there a business prospect or return on investment of all this media? I think we're seeing more and more auto logistics media all the time. So I'm asking these questions. But before we go into a feature interview with Kevin Parada of JP Auto Transport, I want to move into some news. Um, first, I want to say uh, Kevin was here three years ago and we did an auto transport social media show which is interesting. So then, three years later, we're gonna we're gonna come back to it. Kevin has been uh, featured on Auto Transport Copilot with some of his uh, million dollar contract documentary series Journey. So we're gonna follow up and see how that's going. Um, chasing the million dollar contract. You may have seen Kevin, and so we're gonna learn more about it. Now, one of the things that goes with or isn't I don't see it in all, all auto logistics media is the high cost of trucking. The high cost of trucking is something that I, I want to make sure we're always paying attention to because what gets the focus is the rate. How little can I pay for this transport? And anytime we're going to focus on how little can I pay for this transport, I want to bring up the high cost of trucking. Kevin posted this on LinkedIn. And thank you, Kevin, for posting this. He got hit with a repair bill, his fuel bill, insurance payments, payroll. These are not small numbers. And all right, all businesses have a certain expense. But when it comes to shipping, delivery, transportation, we don't we don't we we, we can't grasp all that goes into the cost of making that happen. And there's this assumption, I believe, right? And I don't think I'm alone on this, that, oh, it's just something, going to have to pay a little bit to get done. But it's the high cost of trucking that can't be stressed enough. I know it's not the sexy part, but it's really important. Here's another post from four days ago, 8000 on a DEF system issue, issue with a clutch, the repair bill on that. It's big stuff, and that's why we're the neutral zone. Uh, we're going to bring up some of the things that aren't. You don't want to talk about this stuff, but it's really necessary. I know it's painful. It's not all the rosy, you know, happy uh, picture stuff. But we're following the disconnect between sales and operations because it's got to be done. You have to do it. Um, last week, OEM Car Haulers Part 2. That was a great show. There were a lot of good nuggets in that. If you missed that, go back and check that out. Here's a show, this was, man, this one was controversial. Don't start a brokerage. There are so many folks researching becoming brokers that, man, there's a downside, a serious downside that you just have to think about. I, I think that, I think some of the things that were covered in this show um, should probably be at the beginning of the You're Gonna Get Rich as a New Freight Broker seminar. All right, let's jump into some news. Detroit 3 Automakers EV Future Ride on UAW Deal. The deals that Ford GM Stellantis eventually make with the UAW will go a long way toward determining their electric futures. So we all know about the strike, but I thought this article uh, points to something interesting. Sean Fain has plenty of data to support the push of the strike, 
Stellantis made $18 billion in net income last year. GM took in $10 billion. Ford's bottom line, $18 billion net income in 2021. Um, so automakers don't disagree that there is a raise in order for their 150,000 UAW-represented workers. The problem is the size of the ask. So here's some numbers about labor, an estimate of blended average of labor costs and four GM Stellantis and the top hourly wage for production workers in contracts. You've got estimated hourly labor costs, but you've got this ceiling on the top production wage and that seems to be a sticking point. This It needs to go up. And by the way, interesting point, if concessions were made in the downtimes, it would seem that, yeah, it's time to make up. If you've got all these record profits, can you give some back? Now, EVs have 30 to 40% fewer parts than internal combustion engine vehicles, which will reduce the amount of labor needed by car makers, but new jobs created by EVs should offset those lost jobs suggest the automakers as transmission and engine plants go extinct more domestic manufacturing of ev related parts such as batteries and electric drive components will bring more jobs to the country uh allegedly right speculation but they think so automation will eliminate some jobs but create others in maintaining equipment which is another concern right automation the overall numbers of workers if you go all the way down through the supply chain probably looks about the same Suggest the automakers. Automakers are trying to catch a falling knife in one hand and reach for the stars in the other. Right? Saying EV is EV is the future, but EV volumes are going to increase pretty dramatically. This is where all the OEMs capital spending is going because they're playing catch up to Tesla. It's nonstop comparison to Tesla. Some of the money the UAW wants, they suggest, is going to take from the automaker's ability to invest, and they see that as a problem. Here's some numbers. Ford GM Stellantis pays $66 an hour in wages and benefits per worker compared to about $55 for non-union car makers. Tesla believed to, believe to be as low as $45 an hour. So that's significant. And if the Detroit 3 meet the UAW's demands, labor costs could soar to $136 per employee, costing the companies up to $8 billion each. Taking a deal as it stands now would drive up the price of an EV by three to five grand at a time when new cars are already unaffordable to many and automakers struggle to make money on EVs. Ford brought the issue front and center last week when it said it would pause construction of its planned $3.5 billion battery plant in Marshall, Michigan. Ford said it was pausing work and limiting spending until it felt confident about operating the plant competitively. This is another thing the automakers keep talking about. They'll just send it overseas. In U.S. EV sales, no brand comes close to Tesla. These are the numbers they have to look at. And the investments to ramp up and the costs. And you know EVs are here. You know that EVs are growing. Mannheim says the number of EVs processed at its auctions are up 43% year to date. So on the battery plant, yeah, so now a Ford is talking about, well, we're going to slow down our moves on Blue Oval Battery Park. And, um, yeah, it stopped construction on its $3.5 billion EV vehicle battery plant in Marshall, Michigan. Originally slated to open in 2026, the plant is slated to employ 2,500 workers, have the capacity to build 35 gigawatt hours of lithium iron phosphate cells a year, enough to power about 400,000 EVs. So in a statement issued late Monday... UAW President Sean Fain blasted that move to stop the plant. This is a shameful, barely veiled threat by Ford to cut jobs. You can see this isn't getting any better. It just keeps getting worse, the rhetoric. Closing 65 plants over the last 20 years wasn't enough. Now they want to threaten us with closing plants that aren't even open yet. So that division just keeps going on. So I'm talking about media, right? Okay, there's some of that news Let's talk about some more media news, okay? Um, I'm looking around, and I know you're seeing it too. You see so much, like, there's a lot of articles, and, you know, this is, again, about EVs. Uh, this is from Montway on LinkedIn. Manufacturers and shippers facing EV challenges. Read about the six major hurdle, hurdles facing EV industry, facing the industry today. Run Buggies talking about uh, Samsung plans. Expansion of EV battery operations in Michigan. 
Auto Sleds talking about their podcast interview on Dealer Talk. Super Dispatch has Lucky Load Winner announcements. Pre-owned Auto Logistics has the podcast. Uh, Jeremy speaking uh, on the podcast of Pre-owned Auto Logistics. RPM's blog. You see there's a lot of uh, blog posts coming out of RPM. And even look at this. Use Car Week. That's next month in Arizona. SYCN Auto Logistics is sponsoring the Used Car Week podcast stage. Clearly, auto transport media is a thing. United Road Services YouTube channel. Virginia Transportation is on Instagram. Uh, the Auto Auction channel is now on YouTube, which is, uh, yeah, that is Big Valley Auto Auction out of uh, Texas. And so, you know, I've been ramping up my shorts too. Hey, man, right? With with competition, you got to, you know, you got to keep ramping it up. And that's what's happening. In fact, I, I just want to say, man, I'm loving, I got I got 9,000 impressions happening on this uh, YouTube short on the dealerships. But here's the problem. How do you measure the ROI of all this work? I, you know, that this is the hard part. This really brings in the tough conversations and I have this conversation um, with a lot of people about, you know, clearly with with all these companies putting out all this media, there's a reason we're seeing a, you know, it's it's it reinforces sales, it gets information out. Uh, so what determines the topic of that media, of that blog post, of that podcast, of that interview, and then how do you see the return? of investment on uh, what you what you spent that time on. I asked that question, but I also know, here we go, Carvana rockets in the gaming world with eSports Combine. Just as I thought, I couldn't prove uh, my suspicions that ROI is there. Carvana is getting into the gaming world with eSports Combine. What is this about? Online used retailer Carvana. Everybody knows who Carvana is, has joined with eSports and gaming company NRG in hosting a Skills Challenge event to find the world's next Rocket League pro. Why? We'll just keep reading. They're inviting outstanding student eSports athletes ages 18 and up to compete for a one-year content creator contract, a grand prize of 10 grand, and the chance to make a name in the eSports industry. We are inspired by the talent and passion fueling the growth of esports. Excited to collaborate with NRG as we take our brand mantra of driving people happy to the next level with this new partnership. Rocket League is a vehicular soccer video game described on its website as a high powered hybrid of arcade style soccer and vehicular mayhem. Carvana said the event will also serve as a boot camp for esports business acumen. Now, if you're not familiar with Rocket League, I happen to be familiar with it. This is a game where you drive around on a large soccer field and you're using your car to hit this ball and score goals. There's more to it than that. It's a pretty cool game. But explain the formula that Carvana was able to calculate to make this decision to prop up esports through a game with a soccer ball and cars. Now, I think it's a great idea, but I love that I don't know how you calculate that ROI. And it doesn't matter that I don't know. But uh, this, these are the kinds of news articles I look for that point to there are, there are assumptions and beliefs that we have, and we can't always prove exactly why. Um, but but we, we, we think something, and we're going to go with it. So uh, leverage ATI in your business. We don't ship cars. We move information, and we're looking for the things that aren't easily proved. That's what we do here in ATI. So do me a favor. Stick around, because right after this, uh, we're going to go into, we're going to have an interview with Kevin Parada, president of JP Auto Transport. Stick around. We'll be right back. Transport Auto Quoter is by far the leading auto quoting software on the market and the only auto quoter with a pro version that comes preset with accurate pricing for anywhere in the U.S. So you don't have to worry about it. The best part is that no change with your current software is needed. Just plug TAQ in and start booking jobs. Carriers can easily plug TAQ into their current websites and start making money right away. 
I bet you're wondering how we do this instantly and accurately 24-7. Well, constant analytics is the key. Our PriceWatch team is constantly monitoring current market conditions, paying close attention to seasonal and quick-moving industry changes. At the end of the day, it takes a lot of time and data to maintain good pricing, time that most of us just don't have on a daily basis. So free yourself up. Using TAQ Pro is really a no-brainer. Save time and money, maximizing your leads and optimizing your online investments. You'll finally be able to sleep well at night knowing that TAQ is on the job selling for you 24-7. Never missing a potential job. Auto Hauler Exchange is a new B2B marketplace, the first of its kind in the vehicle logistics industry. Auto Hauler Exchange automates the complex workflows of the vehicle logistics ecosystem by connecting large and small vehicle haulers directly with vehicle shippers. By eliminating the middleman, typically required in vehicle logistics, AHX streamlines the shipping process, cuts shipping delays, and reduces empty space on carriers and unnecessary miles while increasing revenue. Working directly with the shipper, carriers can pick and choose which opportunities fit their routing on a day-by-day -day basis to maximize their capacity and eliminate empty miles, while allowing them to plan their backhauls in advance. The exchange gives control back to carriers. By using technology, AHX creates a frictionless, efficient environment for vehicle transportation. Get off the vehicle hauler roller coaster today with Auto Hauler Exchange. Auto Hauler Exchange B2B Marketplace connects shippers directly with carriers, and that means putting the power of the business transaction back in the carrier's hands. Visit AutoHaulerExchange.com. Link is in the live chat. Thank you so much. Oh, look at that. Look what we've got here. Mark Rodeke making martinis in the super chat. Happy fourth quarter. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and thanks for jumping in the live chat, saying hello, everybody. Um, let's see here. We got, oh, we got Carlos Braxton, DDD, Mark, Rob, Ross, Dennis, Neek. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us on a Tuesday night. All right, here we go. Kevin Prada is the president of JP Auto Transport. He's here with us tonight. Please help me wish a very warm welcome to Kevin Prada. Kevin, can you see me and hear me okay? Yeah, I got you, Jay. How you doing? Thanks I'm for having doing me. Doing good. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy. Um, how was your day today? Yeah, my day was great, Jay. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be on the show. Thanks, uh, thanks for everything you do for the auto transport community. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just happy to be on here again. Well, we're happy to have you back. Um, I shared some of your posts on LinkedIn. You do a lot of posts on LinkedIn. Tonight's show again is about social media, auto transport. Do you what 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 do you get out of interacting on social media? Let's just start with that. Yeah, uh, what do I get out of interacting with social media? You know what, Jay? That's a good question. I was following along in the beginning of your show, and you were talking about like ROI, return on investment, like you know for for the social media posts. And uh, you know, I, I wanted to kind of touch on that because that kind of uh, that kind of discusses what do I get out of social media, right? And I think the ROI sometimes is, uh, you know, it's very hard to, it's very hard to, I guess, calculate that ROI, right? But I can tell you this, I kind of think about social media, what do I get out of it? I look at it as more as a funnel, Jay. I just, uh, you know, by posting videos, posting content, you kind of, you interact with people that you're not otherwise able to uh, meet in person, right? You know, just, just through social media, you know, what do I get out of there? I get to meet people in the industry. People get to know me. I get to network. You know, networking is a big thing in business. Social media nowadays makes it uh, very easy to network. Rather, I, you know, I met you through social media, Jay, and that's just through posting, right? How else would we have ever met each other unless we bumped into each other at a conference or, or uh, you know, just down the street? How else would we have met each other? No, it's a really good question. I don't have an answer for that. Right. I, yeah, we. I guess we wouldn't have, and we we connected at a conference because we connected. Exactly. On social media. That is interesting. And that's how. That's exactly how I look at social media. Is uh, you know, I I don't have any like motives as in, you know, put out some content and you know, 
you, you know, for any specific reason other than put out content, let the people in my industry know who I am, you know, and let them decide if they like my work ethic, they like my personality, they like my, uh, you know, I guess character, you know, I just want to meet people on social media. I want to give them a chance to get to know who I am. So yeah, I'll post videos of me and my, in my working in my truck. I post pictures of me in my office. I post, you know, videos, you know, you, you posted, uh, you know, some of the posts that I've made. I just post the truth, Jay. And, you know, some people can uh, relate to that, you know, not everybody, not everybody will relate to it. Some people will probably think it's, uh, you know, dumb or silly. <laughs> okay. But, uh, well, that, don't, that's don't what I'm, people I'm looking for. Okay, well, that's what I'm going to lead to because there, there's a there's a downside, there's a cost, which is you share, you're 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 educating, you're networking, but then the downside is it, it, it is interesting. It it has a downside in that it's it, you know once you once you get out there, then you feel like well I got to continue to get out there, and I think some people are like well then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get out there to begin with. It's important. It is now. Now there's so much of it. This is actually what this show is about. Is, I mean, it seems like there's there's so much now, right? Is there too much, or do we have to find a happy medium? Actually, here's one thing. I saw like this this uh, this guy, the freight coach. He was on LinkedIn. I hadn't seen him before, and he's he says he's going live every day. Oh wow! And I thought, wow, how do you do that? It's pretty hard. That's hardcore. Now yeah. I believe in, you know, putting in your reps and being hardcore, but there's a certain amount where it just sounds really tasking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think some people this is their full time job, right? My full time job is a little bit different. My full time is job is to uh, move vehicles, you know, ship cars. So I'm not on social media every single day. But I do recognize it as, uh, at least for my business, as a you know strategy to network, strategy to get more customers. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a little tasky. I don't do it every single day. You, I, I think you got to be a good content creator. You know, I I respect you a lot, Jay. You put out these episodes. You know what, three hundred and sixty something episodes. <laughs> well, that's very difficult. I'm, that's and very I'm hard. well, thank you. Well, and I'm actually right now I'm kind of cutting back on the number of shows per week because my my goal was to reach a, a level where Okay, ATI is known, it's a thing, and then now I'm actually focusing on YouTube shorts, I've been trying to work on thumbnails, I'm actually reformatting this Tuesday night show to be shorter, right? right. Uh, um, and I also, I want, you know what I want is some folks that are still waiting to feel inspired to go ahead and start sharing something. Yeah, you know, I think uh, it's a good if, if someone's looking for a content strategy, I look at it this way as well. You know, I'm a small company. I have a small company. I'm not the size of United Road or Montway or, you know, you know, assert as these massive companies. I don't have the same marketing budget. You know, I can't I think Montway spends, you know, several thousand tens of thousands of dollars, you know, on, you know, different different, you know, a different marketing, you know, uh, initiatives. Right. I don't have that kind of budget. Well, that's corporate marketing. Exactly. And so I say to Jay, you know, talking to the carriers my size, you know, talking to the businesses my size is, you know, yeah, we don't have that kind of budget, but social media is free, you know, and on LinkedIn, on, uh, you know, let's say Twitter, let's say uh, various other social media channels, people are all on social media. So, yeah, I don't have the twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month to spend on marketing. But I can throw some videos on LinkedIn, connect with people in my industry, and, you know, hopefully some decision makers see it. Hopefully some decision makers decide that, you know, they like my hard work, they like my work ethic, they like my intelligence, or whatever they may, may see in me. And hopefully they want to do business with me. You know, that's kind of how I see it, Jay, is, you know, we have to, as a small business, try different things. You know, we can't, I don't have the budget. So I need to try different That's right. customers. That's social right. Media, social, social media is a strategy. Well, and this is where, so like if you can go, if you're, if you're a big company, there's actually a trade show right now. There's a fleet lease, uh, AFLA, there's a fleet trade show happening right now. I should know more about it, but I don't, I'm not there. But I saw some pictures of companies like, I don't know if they flew out half their company and I thought, now that's a lot of money. So if you don't have that kind of money to go to the trade shows, 
What you can do is, you can pop up on social media for a fraction of the cost and still do some networking. Yeah, I... Uh, That's what's know, amazing. I, I agree with you, Jay. I think it's, uh, you know, and I'll say it again, you know, speaking to the carriers my size, you know, I, I think about this, social media is just kind of a funnel, you know? Not everybody's going to be interested in what you're posting. I'm posting stuff, real, real time, real live things about my business. You know, I'm just growing my business. I'm telling people the ups, the downs, you know, the good times, the bad times, and, you know, just letting people know where I'm at in my business, you know, and a lot of people relate to that. You know, we're all human beings. They all know, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. For me, it's just let people know what you have going on. Some people will relate to you. Some people will want to help you. Some people will want to work with you and other people won't, you know, but like I said, Jay, the way that I see it and the way that I would say to uh, carriers my size, smaller companies my size, would be, uh, you know, find different strategies where you don't have to, you know, invest as much, you know? And then when you can invest a little bit more, then do that. Use social media as a funnel. And then once you get to know these people, then start investing in, in real marketing. And I think it's just, uh, it's a snowball effect almost. Um, in the live chat, Neek has a great comment. ET Transport on YouTube, TikTok has really good content. 165,000 subs. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Not everything yeah. relates to car hauling, but trucking is all the same industry. You should try and get Ronan on. Neek, if you know Ronan, I'd love to talk to him. This is what I was going to ask is, that's the wrong one. Um, what social media, where would, you know, let's say you're in trucking. Do you go to TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn? Where do you go to share your, is it Facebook? You know, what do you Facebook, do? Right. I mean, yeah. I would say, uh, I kind of look at it like this, Jay. I say that, you know, and by the way, that ET truck, and I've seen him on YouTube. So it, that's just another, uh, you know, it's it's a testament. I have no idea who that guy is. You know, I have no idea who his company is, but I see him all over YouTube and I've clicked on some of his videos and I've never met him in person, but I know who ET trucking is. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's awesome. Just, what is he, do, can you can you think of a video that you saw? I wouldn't even be able to tell you. I just know every time I, I open my YouTube, he has some kind of, I think, uh, you know, he was talking about owner operators, owner operator model. You know, he just kind of talks, it's just kind of business, uh, business channel. So, you know, this is a big plug for him. I don't know him, but this is a big plug for him on his awesome. On his yeah. Show. Plug him. It's all because he's put, it's all because he's, uh, putting social media out there, right? It's all because he's putting videos out there. And that's kind of how I think about my business. My content is, you know, hopefully you get in, in, in front of the people you want to get in front of. Right. And, uh, without even knowing me, they can, maybe we can do business together. I want to talk about corporate marketing again for a second, and then I want to talk about lessons learned, sure. right? Um, the thing about when it gets too corporate, I really do believe, if anybody could say it inside the corporation, it's almost like you're, you're constricted to, to say some of the stuff that you would say in a conversation in the hallways at a trade show. And this is where social media becomes almost like a crutch or a, you know, a hindrance to talking about what you really want to talk about because the corporation now stands between you and the message. Right. Um, and it, it's, it's unfortunate. I, I think that if I could crack the code on how corporations can still keep it real, but corporate approved, oh man, right. I got to figure that out because <laughs> I don't think that's been figured out. And, and that's why I look at when I look at some of the larger companies, and I look at their social media Man, it's not, you know, it's just really yeah, bland. Yeah. I agree with you. You know, I, I think corporate co companies and smaller companies, obviously, we can uh, deliver different content, deliver a different message. But look, to me, that's an opportunity because I agree with you. You know, corporate, it's very tough to, uh, you know, you can't just post anything you want as a big, m massive corporate company. You know, somebody like me, um, I'm not a la massive corporate company, you know, so... I can kind of be a, just a little bit more real, just a little bit more, try to relate to the people a little bit more. And I think, you know, as a smaller carrier, smaller company, I think this is our opportunity. You know, we can do some stuff that the massive companies can't do. You know, so I say use that to your advantage if you can. So, we're so social media is almost, dare I say, a democratic tool. Um, okay, so let's uh, misuse of social media. So, all right, let's get real for a second. So, w we've all made mistakes in the past. It sounds like you made a mistake on social media that then you had to. Yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, keeping I it you. keeping it generic. What are we talking about? I mean, we don't even have to keep it generic. We can just keep it real. <laughs> we can just keep it real, you know. And uh, you know, 
Yeah, I've made mistakes on social media. You know, when I was younger, you know, uh, this was five, six years ago. I've told you this story, Jay. You know, I spoke badly about a, a company online uh, on on social media. But you, you know? did it because you were unhappy about a business transaction. Well, I'll it say wasn't that, a personal attack, right? No, or, absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely okay. not. And it, it's nothing. You know, it is all public information. But this is just my opinion. You know, it was my opinion that I put out there, and it was. Uh, you know, what I've learned, you know, it's how to move properly as a professional, you know, and I'm learning this as I go. You know, I was a driver at that time six years ago. I was driving every single day and I was booking my own loads at that time. Right. And I was looking at the rates while I'm in my truck, you know, and I'll tell you what, man, it's sometimes it's just very, uh, very intensive. You know, I, I get it, you know, for all the drivers out there. So I would look at some rates sometimes posted by some large companies and, uh, you know, it would be very frustrating. And one day, uh, social media gone wrong, you know, one day, you know, I, I, they were talking about this subject, you know, they were talking about this subject online and I decided to ch chip, jump in in the comments. And yeah, I had, you know, some negative things to say about this company and the rates, the rates they posted. Nothing personal, just just about the rates that they're posting online for everybody to see, you know. And I thought they were low rates. I thought they were unfair rates, you know. And uh, yeah, and I won't go back on that. They were un they were unfair. That's rates. the thing. They were unfair rates, weren't yeah, they? they were I mean, rates. I've talked about this stuff on Thursdays. You know, yeah. I still do. Yeah. Yeah. They were they were unfair they rates. Were low. I, yeah. I don't go back on that. You know. But what I do go back on is uh, professionalism. You know, at that time, this is six years ago, I had a little bit less experience and I decided it was a good idea to voice my discontent on social media, you know, and I named the company. And, uh, you know, come to find out, I think I called on one of their loads like three or four years later and they told me that I was, I had been banned for the last three, four years. I had no idea, you know? So they, I took, called on one of the loads. They said, hey, you're banned because of this post that you made on social media. You know, it took me three or four years to find out, but, you know, I found out and then I thought about it. And, you know, this is a, a big company in our industry. And, you know, it's unprofessional to badmouth companies online. Uh, that's But that's, they read back to you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is the part that blows me away. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I called them one of the loads. They were trying to get me set up uh, as a carrier. Then they called me back and they, they read the comment that I wrote to them, you know, or they read the comment that I wrote online and they said, yo, is, is this you talking about our bad rates? And I said, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Uh, it was, yeah, that, that's what I said, you know. So, you know, I stood on that and, uh, you know, nothing personal, man. Is nothing, per this is just, it was, I just thought they were a little unfair. We were in a, to be honest, I'm just going to say this. I shouldn't be bad mouthing companies on social media in front of every, that's very unprofessional. I wouldn't do that. You know, that's a bad approach to take, you know, because just cause I thought they were unfair rates at that time, maybe they have other, other good rates. You know, I just, uh, that particular load I felt was unfair. I'll say that, but, but the, there's, there's ways to do things. I'm just going to say this. There's ways to do things. And I take full ownership of that at the time. I, uh, I, but when, a little bit newer in business, I didn't understand that this is not the best way to do it, you know? And, okay. and I still think that it's not the best way to do it. But here's the, so here's what, here's what I'm hearing is that, right. Neek says that you called them out and they couldn't take the truth. That's on them. I can't imagine how many companies have video playback ready for me when I try to get them to be part of a show. Yeah. I mean, this is where it's like, wow, I mean, we are really, we're in a real tit for tat situation here. Yeah. I mean, you know, these, these are all private companies. They can work with whoever they want. If I offended them, you know, then if they don't want to work with me, you know, that's fine. There's, there's hundreds of other companies out here to work with. You know, I, I wasn't lying. I wasn't, you know, and I'm not going to name any names or anything like this. Uh, but, um, you know, I wasn't lying. That was my opinion. Uh, I thought they were unfair rates. And, you know, we were talking amongst car haulers, talking amongst drivers. You know, this Facebook group was primarily is primarily filled with drivers and carriers. So this is this is uh, this is my demographic. You know, I'm a driver. You know, I own trucks. Uh, I'm a fleet. I have a fleet, a small fleet. So I was trying to interact with other people in our industry that are, you know, along the same lines of what I'm doing. You know, but uh, again, I'm going to say this. There's better ways to go about it than putting companies on blast on social <laughs> media. 
because uh, you know these so, guys have a I lot of you know. Maybe, I didn't uh, know this show was going to be called Mea Culpa, social <laughs> media Mea Culpa. It's really it's fascinating. Here's here's what I want to do. Um, we're going to bring in Ross and Dennis to continue talking about business, social media, and then um, actually Dennis. We get to learn. We get to meet Dennis. This is our first time having Dennis on the show. So stick around. Hang on one second. Um, and by the way, Tommy, Tommy in the live chat, snooze fest. What is snooze fest in reference to? Please do stick around. I hope you're having a good time. We have much more show. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Ross here. We're back with another lucky load winner. All right, we're here with the sales team who are going to call this month's lucky load winner. Let's check it out. Hello? Uh, yeah, good morning. Is this Adis? Yes. Hey, Adis, this is Stan Deke from Super Dispatch. How are you this morning? Good, how about you? We're doing great, but we wanted to see if you were familiar with uh, our Lucky Load promotion. Uh -oh. So the way the Lucky Load works is if you're one of our uh, verified carriers, and so you're verified, and you book a load off the load board, and you use yeah. super pay, that means one of those loads qualifies you to be the lucky load winner. So what that means is we're actually gonna pay you double. You pay double? Yeah. So you, you got, yeah, so congratulations. And we're gonna pay you $350, the same amount that you made from moving that load for Fox Auto Transport that was on the super load board. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Adi, we appreciate you so much. Thanks for, for working with Super Dispatch. Congratulations. Congrats. The next evolution of moving cars faster, smarter, and easier is here. Super Pay by Super Dispatch. Today, shippers waste hours managing fragmented payment systems. And carriers are left wondering, never knowing when they'll finally get the payment they're owed. SuperPay saves everyone time and hassle by securely automating payment upon proof of delivery. No more tracking down payments or onboarding carriers to disconnected payment systems. With integrated payments with SuperPay, Super Dispatch is now the only end-to-end, all-in-one auto transport platform. Automate payments where you automate transport. Super Dispatch, TMS, mobile app, Super Load Board, and Super Pay helping carriers, dispatchers, brokers, and shippers move cars and get paid fast on one auto transport platform. Visit superdispatch.com. Link in the live chat. Speaking of Super Dispatch, here we go. Please do help me wish a very warm welcome to Ross Quinn, account executive at Super Dispatch. And with him, he's bringing Dennis Robbins, Director of Transportation and Logistics. Gentlemen, can you see me and hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, I can see you and hear you, Jay. All right, cool. So, uh, leaving where we, we'll, we'll, we'll leave social media for a second. Although, well, Ross, what's going on? You've had Kevin on Auto Transport Copilot a couple times. You want to jump into that account executive dealer business? Where do we go? Yeah, I, I mean, we can touch on auto transport copilot. It's definitely, you know, on topic with social media. Um, it's new for what we're doing here at Super Dispatch. It's something that was initiated on back at the beginning of the year uh, when we went to visit NADA. Um, kind of a seed got planted in our CEO, Beck Abdulayev's head before we went out and started the year. And, and a lot of it centers around the story that Kevin has to tell and, and kind of building this community of, uh, you know, I guess I could say like peer to peer, but just this community of being able to tell each other's story, uh, knowing where the other one's coming from and, and really kind of giving you a, an actual idea of, of what someone goes through in their day to day, like Kevin does and, and talks about during that, during that auto transport transport co-pilot show thank you very much ross okay dennis please say hello and tell us a little bit more about you yeah so i'm a director of transportation and logistics for a company called auto lenders uh we have 10 dealerships uh, we actually just opened our first one up in uh, florida this week but uh six in new jersey three in pennsylvania and now one in florida and uh yeah i oversee all the transportation logistics 
uh, vehicle inventory movement. Uh, it's, it's a lot of cars. And your <laughs> what's your relationship to Super Dispatch? Um, I'm actually one of their very first ca- uh, shipper TMS customers on the on the shipper side. Um, and I just love that company because they listen to us and they adjust uh, as we request and all the different customers. So yeah, they have the best product out there f- from what I tested. So what folks may not know is you have a long history in auto transport logistics. Am I right? Yeah, a little over 20 years uh, between Mannheim, Ready Logistics, and now Auto Lenders. All right, so you know a TMS that works when you see one. Yeah, I tested a bunch before I actually chose Super Dispatch, and uh, that was from the start they were the best, but they just keep tweaking and, and adjusting, and it really makes my life easier. As well as I hear a lot of good feedback from the carriers we use, too. We do a lot of direct dispatch and use our, their load board, but I do get a lot of feedback from the carriers that their app for that's even really good. So it just makes our life that much easier and we're able to scale better too uh without having to hire as many employees we can keep on moving vehicles and keep our uh, labor low who wants to add to what yeah you I'll, I'll add from the carrier side that yeah i agree with the i agree with dennis that super dispatch on the carrier side is you know very easy to use platform very easy to use app you know um i'm doing the auto transfer co-pilot with them uh, so that was, uh, that was just developed through social media and, you know, I'm a loyal customer. I was, a, I've been a long time customer and yeah, I think social, I think super dispatch, great, great product. I agree with you. Yeah. So, and I think both, yeah, both of you guys have been, have been on it for a while. When, when have each of you, uh, started with, with super dispatch? I think I was about six, about Five, about five years ago, six years ago. It's right right around when Super was uh, creating the uh, shipper TMS. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I would say on the carrier side, I was uh, trying to use this maybe 2017, 2018. At that time, we still had, a, you know, now it seems like a distant future, but we still had, which is not too long ago, paper BOLs. Everybody wanted paper BOLs. And, uh, you know, after college, I, I took, you know, started working in this business, took over my father's company and everybody's using paper BOLs. I quickly re- recognized technology is what we should be using. Uh, but the market, or I'm sorry, the industry didn't adapt. Now, you know, paper BOLs are almost a thing of the past, not quite, but, you know, we're getting a lot closer and, and Super Dispatch has definitely been a leader in that. Yeah, and it's good for both sides too, carrier and shipper having like the e-bill of ladings. Uh, the photos, I mean, it makes everything black and white. Um, and it it's, it protects the carrier just as much as it protects the shipper. Yeah, it's cool to hear. Yeah, I, I know back in like 2018, we didn't even have the load board. So like finding, you know, the network of carriers you wanted to work with was, was still new. So even seeing that it was a diamond in the rough, you know, that far back, Dennis, is pretty, pretty impressive. And, and yeah, it, it's cool that you got started even before that time. Yeah, and most of the times I do use uh, carriers that have been doing work for us for a long time. I've got sure. a lot of uh, ones I brought on with me, that, but they use the Super Dispatch. But what it's helping us, especially that load board, is as we enter new territories, uh, purchasing vehicles in new regions, that Super Dispatch board, I haven't not found a transporter yet, um, which which it really helps. And one thing, too, like, and a lot of people aren't going to believe this coming from the shipper side, but... Our, our goal is to actually pay the correct amount of money because we want that carrier to want to work for us. We want them to be loyal to us and we'll be loyal to them. So sometimes we probably overpay a little bit, uh, industry standard, but uh, we'd rather do that and get those right carriers so they keep coming back. See, so it's okay, Kevin, that you said something about a low rate. There is something to be said for just posting the right rate initially. I will, uh, you know, if I can jump in real quick and just on, on the carrier side, say this, you know, say that most companies are paying, most direct shippers that I know that I have, they're paying great rates. They pay great rates, right? Um, I think for a lot of smaller carriers watching this, 
I would really suggest utilizing the power of super dispatch, you know, when you're servicing companies like let's say Dennis's company, like he has 10 dealerships, you know, I'm sure he wants to know GPS tracking. He wants to know, you know, have these pictures. He wants to know where the truck is, right? This makes it easier for everybody in his position. So I say that because uh, super dispatch gives us the ability to do all these things. We can put ETA, you know, when we're running late, late we can update this. Uh, we can automatically email these BOLs, send these pictures. There's a lot of technology that we can uh, use on super dispatch that makes the carrier service a lot better. So we go back to rates, right? You know, Dennis is paying good rates. Most of these uh, or a lot of these direct shippers pay good rates but they're not going to want to work with companies that are not providing etas that are not visible you know that are not taking these pictures there's a big difference in a good service and a bad service you know you can you can provide great service if you utilize technology like super dispatch you know that'll only help you get better better rates it won't hurt you yeah and i always look at it i don't necessarily want to pay the highest rate i mean if i need to i do but I don't also want to pay the lowest rate. Somewhere there's a medium. You get a good carrier at a good rate. The lowest rate might be a horrible carrier. The highest rate you might get an incredible carrier, but it might be a little out of reach or range and budget. So somewhere in the middle, there's a good median typically. Right. Let me ask you this, Dennis. Uh, you know, would, do you prefer that these carriers use, uh, you know, turn on their tracking and provide ETA updates, take pictures of the vehicles that pick up and delivery? get e-signatures do you prefer that or do you prefer to work with a carrier that does none of this um for the gps tracking uh depending on what moves we're doing it is helpful um when i have certain time sensitive moves uh if a, if a dealer if we sell a car up in new jersey and the cars in florida it's good to know where where that car is coming up so we can keep that customer uh knowledgeable as when they can come in to pick up their vehicle um a lot of our day-to-day -day moves it's pick up and delivery the same day locally, so it's not as important, but the photos are 100% uh, important. Um, plus, we even, we deliver cars to the Mannheim. Photos, if anybody's out there listening, always take photos inside the lot uh, because often they won't check in the car. They say it was never delivered, and that photo is proof that that car was inside their lot. And so on delivery? On yeah, delivery. on delivery. On delivery. That's yeah. a big thing, especially for point. the auto options. Nice. A lot so, of a lot of carriers take them outside in the truck lots. It doesn't really do any good. Uh, it's it's always good to take them inside the secured lot, so you have your proof. Gotcha. With like a sign in the background and people yeah. walking around and <laughs> maybe a clock on the wall. No. I'm, hey, hey. Since we're on that gate passes, are are drivers still? Marking damages on gate passes and handing the piece of paper to the shack, and is it still done that way, or has that been updated? It depends on the it depends on the auction. A lot of some auctions are starting to scan or being able to scan. Uh, you can just scan the gate pass, so you can have that on your phone. But yeah, there are still some some auctions where you have to have a physical gate pass, which uh, you know hopefully. Uh, and I'm sure they're working on this. I'm they have to be working on this. I'm sure so, they are. I'm, I'm glad, we actually, I didn't plan on this topic, but I see a lot of auctions talking about, oh, you know, just a lot of this is great, and we're doing great, and we got relationships, and everybody's working together. But do, do transporters, on average, on the whole, still feel like they're not really part of that mechanism? Am I wrong? Which mechanism is that, Jay? The, the auction system. It, it seems like for the longest time, Many transporters have felt at odds at different auctions, like they're not part of the community, that there's not the communication piece they're looking for. Am I wrong about this? Did I make that up? Or does that still exist? I would say that's not something that I can talk about. I'm not, I'm not. Okay, sure. right. Okay. Yeah, I, well, I just, I just don't know. <laughs> you don't have experience on that. Okay. Yeah, I don't have, I don't feel that. It's uh, my job to bring up the stuff that's tough to talk about. But if that doesn't exist, great. So I know I, in the past, I don't know if it does or it doesn't. Transporters okay. fault on everything. They always didn't. They really tried to push everything on the transporter and wouldn't make sure. it easier for the transporter. Okay, All but right. I, I also think there's some. Like I know a couple carriers. They they have great relationships with Mar with Mannheim's and the auctions, so they do get that extra special treatment. I think if you give honey, you get honey. Sometimes, 
I would say, yeah, that's definitely. So maybe a, that a, there needs to be more honey given. Well, maybe, maybe just uh, if you're easy to work with, people will want to be work with you a little bit more, right? You know, I'm if, just, you're, if yeah. you're a driver that's angry and, and frustrated, and maybe you know, that's what it is. I get it. I I get it. I felt that too. I have feeling that, or I have felt that when I've been on the road too, long day, can't find the car, you get frustrated. I get it, you know, but. You know, you also got to remember we're running a business. We're all human beings. People are going to want to be more. Uh, they're going to want to help you a little bit more if you're a nicer person, right? Okay, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's is it's it's hard. You, know, you got to walk a long ways to get the car, and it's just you're frustrated, you're tired, and maybe you're you're not at your best when you're in that interaction. Plus, I think in many times it's the security, right? Secure the security that's on staff doesn't have any relationship to the transaction it's a rough interaction and it just you know maybe yeah. that's what it is anyways i'm just I'm, I, that's my thing is i've i've got to help talk about the tough stuff this is what won't make it what i just said will not make it into any corporate messaging anywhere because it's not you know that's not fun stuff I mean, you're speaking for the carriers. Yeah, I, that's I, right. I'm speaking think, for the carriers. You know, we, we all experience different things. Right. But yeah, I would say this, you know, being in, you know, being from being being a driver myself and, you know, having done this for many years, I will say, you know, you know, I'm also spent I also spend time in the office. I also spend time. I spend time in every vertical. Right. I would say the drivers have a very tough job. You know, maybe some people think it's easy, you know, but it's very tough. You know, it's very, it's very tough what, 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 uh, auto transport drivers have to deal with, you know, that's my opinion. Maybe other people don't agree, but you know, from well, my experience, that's what I've seen. No. And like, I just saw an article how like the lack of truck parking makes many owner operators feel like they're homeless. The I mean, nightmare. can you imagine nobody Jay, who works in the auction goes through that? Do they? Jay, it's, uh, you know, and I think that's a big problem. That's an auto, that's not an auto transport problem. That's a trucking industry problem where, you know, these drivers myself have done this, you know, your, your ELD ends in half an hour or an hour, right? You're over time. You need to look for parking. You go to one truck stop, no parking. You go to another truck stop, no parking, parking. And the only choice you have really, a lot of people don't realize this. The reason it's a problem is because the only place you can park is either somewhere where there's no parking or somewhere where it's very dark and dangerous, you know, and, you know, without parking. Yeah, that's that's a whole different subject, but it's very <laughs> dangerous when there's no parking. You know, the only option a lot of times that are left, not always, but a lot of times is park somewhere where it's dangerous, dark, not lit. You're not around anybody. Um, it's It's dangerous. I don't think a lot of people talk about this or realize this. Well, and on that and note, I mean, I never it, realized. Oh, oh, go ahead, Dennis. That's please. good to hear. Oh, I was just saying, and this would be, wouldn't this be, here, here's the parallel to the dealers. Being made to load and unload in the center lane, you can't park anywhere on the dealership or even on the curb, and you're in the street. I mean, that would be, that would be really frustrating. And, yeah. and you're you're trying to provide top customer service and all the stuff, and here you are worried about getting run over. Yeah. That'd be hard. Yeah, that's what they do. Load and unload a lot of times in the middle of the street. It's dangerous, you know, so, you know, we talked at the, at the, you know, beginning of this, you know, about low rates, you know, these guys, uh, you know, maybe this sounds like I'm over exaggerating, but these guys are loading and unloading in the middle of the lane. So when you want to pay these guys $200 to go 600 miles, 400 miles, you know, you, you don't realize, man, I'm loading, unloading these cars in the middle of the street for you. I don't have to take that load. You know, I don't have to take that load, but sometimes when you need to make money, you, you have to take uh you have to put something together, right? You know, but again, That's you know, right. we're, we're all running businesses, Jay. We don't have to take loads that pay too low. It's ultimately right. up to us. You know? But when we got to fill that spot, you know, yeah, it's tough. It, it, so uh, it this is, go ahead. Sorry. So, well, this is my job in social media. My job is for somebody to, while they're interacting and learning and sharing, they also get a piece of a hardship of, as I put it, the high cost of trucking, whether it's actual cost, labor expense, or time, or pain. I mean, it's it's just really tough out there. I don't even drive a truck, but it's all the years in dispatch. I feel like I did. <laughs> PTSD from it all. <laughs> uh, Dennis, I want to ask you a question. We're almost done here. Is Do you still have many drivers left using paper? No. 
we we're exclusively we require super dispatch in the e-bill bill of ladings uh we will have a few that that will try to still have a paper signature um but we still require every every transaction we do we dispatch through super dispatch and require them to use the uh bill of ladings through there Dennis, one question I have where, you know, I kind of have to coach people through this on a phone or just over Zoom like we're on now. But, you know, we can't force drivers. Super Dispatch can't. You know, we're just the technology provider. Like any other app that you download, you have permission over your own device, you know, being the owner of it. You know, whether you want to provide that tracking or not. So you download Super Dispatch, you get those three options. I want to turn it on, you know, all the time. I want to have it on while using the app or I want to have it on right now at this only time. You know, it, it is really a, it is really a transaction between these two parties and, and kind of setting that precedence for that transaction on what you want to happen. So I'm, I'm curious just as like a user of the product and then Kevin, you on the other side of it, like have maybe Kevin, you've run into someone that's required you required you to hit. I want to be tracked at all times or Dennis, maybe you've, set some sort of pre precedence for like a a load that you've had to had have like have had to need to get it moved and, and you wanted to make sure tracking was on. i don't know if that's ever a situation you've run into but i'm just curious no i mean there, there's times i would love for it to be always on i mean it's great you just log in and you see it but i i it's something i ethically would never force or require someone to do uh to always have it on It'd be nice every once in a while for an update of the GPS, but yeah, I, I wouldn't expect somebody to to have their GPS on twenty four seven because gotcha. it's really their app in their phone. So they they park the car in their lot for the night, and then their private time is is being tracked as well. So I, I would never expect that. Yeah, Ross, I will. I think like uh, the GPS, you know, the GPS feature as a carrier, I like to use it. That's just a part of the technology, you know, service that I want to offer as a company. Um, but, you know, I've talked to many people about this GPS, uh, GPS uh, subject. And m what I find is most drivers do not want to be tracked 24 seven, you know, but if we're being pinged, you know, periodically, that I think that's less invasive. You know, mm -hmm. if you're pinged, you know, once an hour, once every two hours, you know, you see you see a location every now and then. And Super Dispatch does have that, I believe, is the provide status update or send status update feature. Um, yeah, you can do the manual ETA like you had yeah. mentioned earlier. Too. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's just what I've seen, what I've talked to or, you know, through the different conversations that I've had with drivers and, and carriers mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, 24-7 uh, – I mean, I think it's good, to be honest. I I use it. That's the service that I want to provide. I don't mind it, you know, but I get it. You know, some drivers think it's invasive, you know. I But uh, the status update, you know, periodically is, to me, is a good service. Cool. Good to know. Yeah, I, I think, you know, maybe some drivers struggle with how to, like, turn on and off stuff with their apps. So they choose one, they set it and forget it, and then, you know, it's kind of a struggle from there. But... Yeah, yeah. Now, the more educating we can do kind of around, you know, how to use it maybe would, would you know, yeah. allow them to provide that customer experience if they wanted that option. I, I should say this as well. You know, when you pick, uh, you know, allow while app is open, you're not being tracked 24-7. You're being tracked when the, the phone is open. So, yeah, very easily while you're driving, keep it, keep it open. When you're not driving, close the app, and then you're not tracked anymore. So I do want to, I do want to, you know, um, you know, bring attention to that, that you're not being yeah. tracked you're not being tracked 24 7 if you close the app you know just yeah while you're... cool so using that option that yeah only while using the app is probably the best way to go cool when you are being tracked so how close to your actual location is i mean is it within feet of where you're at does anybody know typically uh, it's like an approximation i don't know i don't believe it's like within like feet of where you're at um but yeah we're gonna to have to have our product manager on the call at some point. On the back end, <laughs> it shows you uh, near, you know, like for example, near Los Angeles, California. Yeah, at least from what I've seen on the back end, it does not show the exact location. It just says near the city at this time. Right. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, I agree. Near this city, and that's that's what you're looking for, Dennis. Isn't that what your shipper and what you're looking for? You just want to know this a city 
Yeah, exactly. I want to see the movement yeah. of that vehicle up at the I-95 corridor across the country. Just see that it's going and heading the right direction and it's it's making the trek that it's supposed to. I don't we, even know exactly. We were talk we had a show tracking car haulers a couple weeks ago. The question, I think part one of the things was, okay, well, if my route doesn't make sense to the shipper, I don't want to have somebody calling me asking me why it looks like I'm going backwards. I mean, that does make sense, too. They could pick up a car for me in Florida, have another one somehow in Tennessee, and and it would look crazy to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a good point, too, on that. It is a good point. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I guess that the point the, and what they're saying is that's why they want to leave it off. They don't want to have any questions about their methodology, and I can understand that. But if you always leave it off, aren't you going to get more phone calls? That's that's what I. Think. That's right. exactly. Yeah. What I think. That's what. Yeah. I, think. I don't know. I, I, you know, on our on our brokerage side, Jay. Yeah, that's exactly it. When we ship cars and people use Super Dispatch, we don't need to call them. We don't need to talk to them. But when you're not using Super Dispatch, which we require, you know, and uh, we don't know your location when the vehicle's late, then we have to call you continuously. You don't want to answer. Then we got to email, and then the driver gets mad that you know they're uh, that you're calling them, and we're just like, well, you know, send us an update, you know, or or you know, be proactive, right? But that's that's just my dispatchers and I joke all the time. The best transporters are the ones we really don't know because we don't have any communication, very little communication with them. Yeah, I would say, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but I would say that's probably the best experience, right? You know, you sh you dispatch a vehicle, you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to call anyone, talk to it, you know it's going to get delivered, and uh, that's that. Yeah, exactly. That's there, there's carriers out there that I use that I I don't know if I've ever spoken to them really because they just they take the order, they pick it up, they deliver it. Yeah. Okay, and that transporter, are you watching the GPS of that transporter? I, you and, you know. and after a while, no, I don't even really yeah, pay attention I, to that well, guy. Well, I think that's exactly that's where I was headed, is that most of the times the GPS, it's not like anybody's watching. No, no one, you know, from what I've seen, Jay, is no one wants to track your GPS. The only time they want to know where you're at is if you missed the delivery, you're late, and you're unresponsive. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, unresponsive, and you kind of get the... The typical lying answers that you get, and you know the guy's being shady. That is true. That is actually really the only time I've ever really started looking at that GPS. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has things to do. No one is sitting in front of a computer watching where you know you're going. It's just all they care about is, you know, are you going to deliver the vehicle on time? If you're not going to deliver it on time, you know, give me an update. Let me know. You know, I think that's uh, a lot of times that's what it is. I think it's kind of like if you're in a store. There's about 20 cameras, but probably none of them is anybody staring at you. We, right. we, we have this, you know, when you watch the movie Casino, right, there are guys on the catwalks with binoculars, so we all assume that's what's happening, but that's not really what's happening. Yeah, I That's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Casino. <laughs> Well, I think like Dennis said earlier too, like, you know, he's not trying to scale the number of employees. He he just wants to be able to scale the number of volume he's managing if, if he can with just one product. So you can't have that many eyes on, on that many trucks at one time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um pretty great stuff. I just wanna say thanks, Mr. Holly Izzy, for the um for the super chat and the uh make a martini. In the super chat and everybody, you know, participating in the live chat. Some great conversation happening there. Is there anything we missed? Was there something that we were supposed to cover we didn't? Um, does anybody have a company, service, or product they want to promote? Talk about one more time. Uh, now that we're here, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, pitch uh, pitch my company, JP Auto Transport. We're a carrier broker. We have a brokerage division, and we have, we're have we asset-based carrier company. Uh, so, yeah, anybody watching, anybody that needs, uh, you know, some services in Southern California or Texas, Arizona, you know, reach out to us. JP Auto Transport from uh, Pomona, California. What's the best contact number there, Kevin? Uh, best contact number is uh, my email address, kevin at jpautotransport.com. Or dispatch at jpautotransport.com. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Dispatch at jpautotransport.com. 
Um, we'll come back to Super Dispatch. Dennis, do you want to... You got any contact info, anything you want to share? Huh. If there's any carriers out there that are looking for some work, can't guarantee what I have out there for you, but uh, yeah, definitely you can reach out and we can see what you have to offer and if there's anything that matches up with you. And um, what's the best way for someone to reach you, Dennis? Uh, the email is D, as in Dennis, Robbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S, at autolenders.com. Great. D, Robbins, at autolenders.com. Got it in the live chat. And then Ross... If anybody wants to reach Super Dispatch, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, go to superdispatch.com. And uh, I think it would be a really cool resource to go and check out auto tr that auto transport co-pilot. Um, it's yeah. a cool window into what's going on in the life of someone that's trying to build a business, you know, scale it. So it, it's cool to see what Kevin's doing there. Um, you'll get a good so aspect I, uh, of you know some of the tools that Dennis benefits from as well. So uh, you'll you'll really kind of understand everyone in in the transaction, everyone you know who who's dealing with that you know push and pull of the everyday. I need to get this car moved situation. I just posted the YouTube link to Copilot on cool. YouTube, and when you Thank go you. there, you'll see Kevin's videos. Absolutely. Uh, there's a introducing auto transport co-pilot with Beck video so you can get more center there. Well, you got several videos of Kevin. So, um, Kevin, you're on this journey searching for the million dollar contract. Your business is growing. You're engaged in social media. Where are we on this journey? Where are we on this journey? You know, we're just, uh, we're on the journey, man. <laughs> Where are we? We're on it. You know, uh, we're just trying to grow the asset side, uh, the asset based side of our business. We just launched a, uh, a lease purchase owner, owner operator program, Jay. So, you know, where are we on the journey? I have, I own and operate a fleet of trucks and now we're signing on a uh, lease purchase owner operators. So for anybody that's interested, hopefully we start to grow our business. We help other people start their own business and, uh, you know, we can also take on more customers, more clients, you know, hopefully land some OEM contracts and some contracts with some large dealership groups. And, you know, as a carrier, Jay, I want to uh, land these contracts and, you know, pay, pay a lot of it back to the carriers, man. Cause I know how hard it is. That was an awesome answer. Where am I on this journey? I'm on this journey. That's the answer. Well, that's it, man. If someone said, Jay, where are you on ATI? I say, well, I'm on the journey. I, I'm on the journey. I don't know where I'm, we're on the graph we are but we're on it so yeah, we're on the we're on the we're on the journey man i think that's all journey. we can do right we're on the journey we're trying yeah. our best we're trying to grow uh it doesn't happen overnight but we're on the journey you know be on the journey that's it so i want to thank everybody for uh taking time to be on the journey with all of us tonight um in this community ross Dennis, Kevin, thank you, gentlemen, so much for taking the time tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, yeah. Jay. Thank you. Have a great us, time. Jay. All right. Bye, have guys. a great night. I'll let you go, and we'll we'll catch you next time in a few years. Thank you, Jay. Right. Appreciate I'll you. see you on social media. I see you, man. All right. Take care. All right. Ended the meeting there, and um, that's that's cool. It's great to catch up. And um, you're right. I really. You know, I, I have a couple ideas when I put a show together. i got to come up with a theme and stuff like that. And what are we going to, you know, who's going to be on the show and what are we going to talk about? But beyond that, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do. And other than try to dive into what's happening right now. Because it's not all scripted out. It can't be. Life isn't scripted out. Um, but the idea behind tonight's show was, you know, what, what are you doing with the social media that you're interacting with? Why do you like what you like? Why do you watch what you watch? Why do you post what you post? And are you seeing are you seeing what you want to see? Is there are there things you're not seeing? Um, it's a philosophical question and it's a it's something that I, I suppose we can all only consider within ourselves. And maybe the best way to compare it is you know you look at like what's happening with you know Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift taking over the media right now. And it's certainly it's certainly not that big, but um, but that is momentary stuff. Whereas I'm more interested in kind of that longer evergreen. Where are we on this journey? And I do mean it. Listen, if you've got if there's something about an auction or a dealer, 
as a transporter or working in logistics that you want to share, that you want to dive into, I really do believe that there is more to talk about that just isn't really being covered in more of a corporate marketing setting. If I'm wrong, if everything's peachy, that's awesome. Like, everything's cool with carpoolers, everything's great with gate passes, nobody has to walk too far at a certain auction, um, nobody's almost getting run over trying to load or unload at a certain dealership. I'm not trying to call a company out, but I am here to be the neutral zone, to talk about the things that need to be talked about. That's what makes ATI, auto business, uh, the true neutral zone, and we're here every Tuesday night. Also, Thursday, I just want to say this, too, before I move on. Um, let's go to this. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com, and check this out. You, this is the podcast. You can listen to this on your own time and save time. Please do join us Thursday. We have Auto Hauler Exchange on Dispatching Live. You can ask Royce of Auto Hauler Exchange questions. Whatever your question is about the Auto Hauler Exchange marketplace whether it's payment or signing up as a carrier as a shipper what's this all about please do join us thursday royce will be with us the show starts at noon royce is on from 12 30 to 1 so please do join us on thursday on dispatching live and on friday on cars in the move we are loading a nine car hauler live let's see uh how that goes we're going to be at midwestern car carriers and, uh, and you're, and you're going to want to tune in for that. Ask questions in the live chat. It's ATI Auto Business, the Car Stupid Business Channel. My name is Jay. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me again on a Tuesday night. If you jumped in the live chat, thank you for doing that. If you missed the show live, lots of people watch on demand. Please do leave a comment, like, share, uh, tell your friends, subscribe. Here comes the car hauler, and we'll see you again on Thursday. Thank you so much.